Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsanza Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at the add-on one-click damage. So this add-on has been out for a while now, and I was originally going to review it when it first came out, but it had a few short fallings and slight issues with it that led me to the point where I probably wouldn't have really used it, and as it only just come out it didn't really seem fair to do a review at that stage. Now it's a bit later and I've come back to it, and I have to say that the changes have been pretty dramatic. And it's now an add-on that I think is well worth the cost, as it's now going to give you really good results and it's going to save you a lot of time. So we're going to go through the basics of what this add-on does and how it works, and then we'll have a look at some tips and tricks to have a look at how you can get the most out of it. Now if you already know how it works, you might want to skip to the tips and tricks, so you can use chapters to do that. So let's get started. So I've got these bricks set up, we can imagine this to be a very simplistic pyramid and we want to add some damage to this. Now we could sculpt this manually, but if you start getting into a building with a lot of bricks, that is going to take quite a lot of time. If you do want to have a look at how to do that, there's a link in the description. And that does give a slightly finer level of control, but I think this is really, really helpful. So I'm just going to click N, find where I've got one click damage. For me, I've put that into the edit panel using simple tabs, but for you it will be its own little section. So how does this work? So effectively what you do is you click on your object that you want to damage and you click make damage. And that'll add some chips and dinks and nicks to this object and you can change the amount by making it deeper or less deep and you can change the scale which doesn't really change the size of it necessarily but it just filters through different options of where things are going to be in terms of the texture. As soon as you're ready and happy with what you've got, let's just put that somewhere there, you click apply and then you've got this texture set. Now. There are some options for the different textures you can do. So for example, we have clouds, you also have Musgrave, and these are the two that I generally use the most. So for me, the cloud texture looks much more like violent damage and chipping, maybe something that's a little bit older and has been going through a lot more wear and tear, or something that's had impacts against it that have been chipping sections out. Musgrave looks like a little bit more natural wear and tear over time, where something's been slowly worn away, but again with a couple of nicks and scratches. So for stones, these are the two I generally use. However, there are some other ones, for example, marble's quite good. It has a bit less in terms of the general wear, and the chips are slightly less with slightly less extremes. Though if you go high with the amount, it will put in this marble type texture, which you can use for various things as well. Then we have Voronoi. Now this gives a much more smooth appearance to the damage. And along with the wood pattern, and I find these useful for demonstrating the sort of erosion you'd get from maybe water or wind, or maybe the wear that you'd get on some steps that were only being walked on, for example, inside a building. So they're your five different patterns. Now, once you've done these, you can actually do multiples. So for example, if I wanted to select, let's say those, and I wanted to make damage, you'll notice that it doesn't have a make damage option until I hold down shift and select one of the ones that are already damaged, for example, in this case, the cloud version, and then make damage and it will do the same, but it will still randomize the textures so you don't get the same pattern every time, which is really important. Now there are points where this might cause errors. I can't actually see any on these and I actually generally find that it doesn't create errors, but on, oh, there we go, we've got an error there. So if I click this and click quick fix, this will then go through, find the issues, and find a way of fixing those. So I have to say, I'm quite surprised I actually found that because I very rarely find issues with this now, whereas in the past it did have some. The other thing you can do is you can click change pattern and it will just change how this pattern is appearing. Now, what I don't think this does, or to me, this still looks like the pattern that I selected on it. It basically just goes through and changes the seed. So that's an option. So it doesn't change the pattern itself. The other thing you can do is if you're not happy with it or you want to change this totally, you can click recall and it will just go back to the original object. So on to some tips and tricks. So let's start with the basic ones. The first is that as well as this change pattern, which will just filter through the different seeds, if you shift click onto another object, which has got a different type of damage on it, and then hold control and click change pattern, it will actually change the pattern or the noise type to that one, which is handy if you want to change things around. The other thing you can do is you can also hold control when you click recall and if you do that that will not only recall the object so we've got the original object here but it will actually make a duplicate of that original object and then keep the one that's damaged as well so that's really useful if you decide you want to bring out another object and then try out a different type of damage for example i might say okay i want to try out actually the musgrave apply it and then actually yes i prefer this to this one so i'm going to click shift click and control click on change pattern and now I've got that pattern put in place here. 
So it makes it really easy for you to just try out different things and select different amounts of damage. Now, the biggest problem that I used to find with this, if I just come over to here, is that if I come to here and click make damage, I'm gonna put cloud so this is a little bit more obvious to see. Let's bring down the amount slightly and then apply it. If I come over to this object, and I'm just gonna to come to the item option so you can see that on both of these, the scale is set to one. This isn't a scaling problem. But if I click make damage here, even if I bring the amount down, the size is just very, very different. And I can't control that with the scale. As I said, this is more a scale or the pattern as you move it around. So this isn't actually going to result in two objects that look really similar to each other. So let's cancel that and actually let's recall that one as well. So this can cause a lot of problems because say I've got a large object here, so this plinth, if I click make damage on this, notice that this just doesn't look similar. These two materials look like they are entirely different. For example, this might be a battered and shipped sandstone. This just looks like, well, just totally out of scale. And this originally was one of my biggest issues with one click damage, and it just led me to not use it. But this isn't a problem anymore. So if I just, let's shift and D, and bring those over and actually let's do that again so if i just make the damage with this one let's bring up that a little bit in terms of the amount and then apply it and then i'm going to do the same thing here and then apply it we can actually control what object is doing what really easily for example if i want these to look at this scale i can now select those two objects either one or multiple shift click on this and then this one that's selected last will be used as almost a key for the other ones so i can click make damage and now both of them will look at this scale of damage or i could do it the other way around i could select both of these and then shift click on the one at the smaller scale and click make damage and then the larger one doesn't have the problem that we saw over here so a really elegant way to have solved this and because of that generally when i'm working on these or oh, let's just recall that i will often just have different cubes that I keep with these objects as my guide or my damage keystones. And then what I'll do is I'll just click the thing that I want, shift click on the one that I want it to be similar to and click make damage so that it will keep to that scale. So that's the more complex functions of this add-on. Now, I'm just gonna show you a couple of other things that I found quite useful. So let's delete that out. Let's shift and D that to make a copy. And then let's recall this and change its pattern to let's say Musgrave where it's gonna be slightly less damaged. Let's just bring up the amount there a little bit and apply it. So I've got these two as my keystones that I'm gonna be using as my damage. And let's say I've got lots of these and I'm gonna add lots of damage to my stones. In fact, let's just G and then Y those along a bit so it looks a bit more like paving. So what I could do is I could have some stones that are older than others, maybe some have been replaced or worn in different ways. So let's just say select the majority of them and do something like those. Shift click on the one that we want to have it copied from, click make damage, and it's gonna add all those damages in. And then I'm gonna select some other ones and then just shift select the one that's more chipped using the cloud pattern and click make damage. And then we've got those there. Now, if I want to do this on a large scale, it's quite easy to potentially miss a stone. Now, if you just go into top view and you've got your cavity on, which I always have on, there's a link in the description for my viewport settings. But as long as you've got cavity on and you look from above with a similar object behind it, it becomes really easy to see which ones haven't been damaged yet. So that one, this one, and this one still need to have some damage. So let's make damage there. It just makes life really quick for you to spot out those individual bits that haven't been damaged yet. So that's a really nice little tip that I found very, very helpful. The other thing that I want to mention, which took me a little bit of exploring to discover this, is that there is a slight overlap with one other add-on. And I don't understand why they interact, but they do. If I just undo those. If you've seen my other video on a add-on called Caramorph, I'm just gonna to go to Edit Preferences and activate that. For some reason, when Caramorph is activated, any object that you have, if I come over here to my object, basically gets two users and you can't actually remove those two users. Now, if you use one-click design when you've got these two users set up, it will sort of work, but some of the other functions, for example, if I want to click multiples of these and then make damage and then try to change the pattern, it has issues. 
that is caused by the fact that there are these two multiple users at the same time. Whereas if I just go to edit preferences and turn camera morph off, you'll notice that suddenly none of these objects have two users, except for the one where I tried to then recall this and it didn't work. So if you're gonna use one click damage before you start using it, if you've got the camera morph add-on, do turn that off first. It took me a remarkably long time to find that out and work out what was going on there with some assistance from VFX Guide who creates the one-click damage add-on. And I have to say he was absolutely fantastic in helping out with this, really quick at responding to messages and just generally a really nice guy, which is great when you're buying an add-on and you know the person who's created it is someone who's really into helping out his customers. Speaking of which, there is a link in the description for this add-on. It is an affiliate link which means it doesn't cost you any extra to use it, but it does give a little bit of money to the channel. I'd also really strongly consider going in with a bundle where you get Cracker as well. I'm gonna do another video on that add-on, which again is really, really useful and speeds up your life so much for doing certain types of damage. So it is gonna save you some money if you purchase those together. As always, if you like the video, please do hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and if you want to support the channel further, we do have a Patreon page where you get these videos a week ahead of time, ad-free, and other great benefits like access to the Discord channel. Have a great day, guys.